The discovery of a 1.8 million year old skull in the former Soviet state of Georgia may uh, rewrite the evolution story of our early human ancestors. The research of scientists working with the fossil suggests that Homo habilis, Homo uh, adolphinus, adolphinsis, and our expert's gonna help me with that mm -hmm. word, and Homo erectus all belong to the same species rather than existing as individual species. Professor Susan Anton is an anthrop anthropologist at New York University and is here to help explain this discovery and what it might mean. Welcome to Arise America. Thanks for having me, Debbie. And you know what? More than anything, I'm excited because you brought props. I brought toys. <laughs> <laughs> brought toys. Before we get to the toys, let's, let's talk about this discovery of this, and it's known as Skull 5. Right. Tell us about the skull, what, what is unique about this skull and the, fo the, the form or shape in which it was found, yep. and also what it implies. Yeah, well, so the really cool thing about Skull 5 is it is one of the most complete skulls that's been found this old. So usually we get, you know, a little bit of this or a little bit of that. We don't have things that go together and Skull 5 has a whole top part of the head and it has the whole lower jaw and it may even have some of the postcranial skeleton, the stuff below, below the neck. Mm -hmm. And so that's really great because we can tell a lot about the individual when you have all those pieces. It's also from this terrific site called Demonisi in the Republic of Georgia, which uh, was deposited over a really short period of time. And by really short, I mean, you know, we might be talking 10,000 years, 20,000 years. So <laughs> As opposed to a million years. In geological time, it is the blink of an eye. <laughs> okay. Over a short period of time, and there are a bunch of individuals at the site. And that means that we can say something about what the population looked like, how much variation there was. If you look around the studio and you see all the people in the studio, you can tell that you know, each individual is a little bit different from each other individual. And what I do is I look at them and I say, okay, well, what do they look like under their skin, right? And I'm thinking about how their bones differ. And so in the fossil record, often we only have one specimen or maybe a fragment of a jawbone that we try to develop an individual out of, and then from there we have to go to a population. So the site is very important, the specimen is very important. Whether it'll rewrite human evolution, well, that's, that's something and we're gonna talk about. that's what I wanted to get to, because it seems like not everyone agrees uh, about the analysis of this skull or the discoveries there. Right. You know, the assertion from this discovery is that there uh, could be one species with slight variations right. as opposed to four. Right. Okay, what do right. you think about that? Right, well, so I'm with them as far as there being one species at this particular site. I think their evidence is good that all five of the skulls that they have so far are from a single species. And I'm with them as far as they went to say that that species looks like it's an early version of Homo erectus because mm -hmm. it has all of the characteristics um, that we think are important for that species. Where I think they've overstretched is that that variation, they say, encompasses all of the variation that we see in the early Homo species in Africa. So the other species, Habilis, Rudolfensis, and Erectus, they say are all one species because it's encompassed by this variation. And I actually think that they didn't uh, look at sort of the right set of characters to make that determination. And that's what I was gonna ask you then. What are they not considering in order to make this big leap? Right, so one of the things that they're, they're doing, and here I'll go to the I toys if would. I can. <laughs> yeah. um, so these three specimens, and these are plastic models, so I don't get to go to jail. Um, <laughs> these three specimens show some of the variation at at the site in the Republic of Georgia at okay. Demonisi. So mm -hmm. this is actually a model of the lower jaw of the individual that was described last week in science. Okay. Right? And this is another lower jaw from the same site. And I think, you know, even people that don't do this all the time can see that this one is kind of tiny and this one's yeah, kind of Yeah, it's very big, different, very different. Right, mm -hmm. so you've got a big giant one, you've got a little tiny one. And so they're talking about the range of variation in those two um, different specimens, right? And so they're, so they're saying the range of variation is really great, maybe as great as it is in us, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But what they're doing in their analysis is a kind of a global examination. So think about if you were looking at a peach and you were looking at an orange, you could compare them in a lot of different ways, mm -hmm. right? You could say- They're both round. They're both round, mm -hmm. right? And by, that, by virtue of that, they're both the same thing because they're both round, mm -hmm. right? But you're not really capturing what's important about being a peach and what's important about being an orange in that analysis. And, I, and so to that extent, I think they haven't captured what's important about being Homo rudolfensis or Homo habilis or Homo erectus in their analysis of the variation. Of the I got site. it, I got it, I got it. Now you, you, you brought two other 
uh, craniums, the, the dome of the skull. Right, right. So this is one of the first skulls that was found from the Republic of Georgia, from the site of Demonisi. So, and it actually goes with this little mandible Got here. It. Uh -huh. All right, so those two go together. Um, and this specimen uh, is one of the larger brained at that site. This specimen is from uh, Kenya. It's from um, a, a Homo erectus site in Kenya. And this is the same species as this. And I think if you look at these, I'm not sure if we can get this on camera, but if you look at these two together, um, it's fairly easy to see that this one that's in my left hand, the one from Georgia, is a lot smaller than this one that's in my right hand. But it has a lot of the same anatomical features uh -huh. as this one. And so one of the things that Demonishi showed us is that Homo erectus isn't always big. We had this idea that Homo erectus was always big um, because it was sort of an accident of history. What we had found, uh, which fossils had come up at which time, they happened to be big. And so we started to sort of separate things just on size. This showed us that. Can I say it? Size okay. doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely can say it. We're going to have to stop the conversation. Okay. This is so fascinating. I suspect that this study opens up more questions as opposed to answering many of the as questions. As any good study does. <laughs> Dr. Susan Anton, thank you so much. I thank appreciate you, it. Please come back anytime yes. and bring more toys. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow on Rise America. Bye-bye.